Dear Harstum, Zerg is just too overpowered in plat and above. It requires an ostrich brain to play it and somehow reach GM with insane scouting ability, map hacks, a hundred army supply in a second, question mark, question mark, question mark. As a Protoss, I can't even play a macro game with Zerg or I will lose badly. In almost all my Zerg players I play against is either I go cheese or all ins, no macro as lurkers. Breed Lords and Ultra Links are just too overpowered. This replay show that even without a good Zerg comp can beat Protoss with ease. Roach slash Hydra slash Viper isn't good at all, but somehow won, question mark, question mark. Against CIA with Colo and Disruptors, what? Harstam, admit it, Zerg is just OP. Even if I don't play perfect, the Zerg Swarm is equivalent to the Zerg negative IQ left. Minus 1.5 billion IQ. Please tell me, Papa Harstam, God of Protoss, is it just Inva or do I suck? Name Kenosha, Race Protoss, League Platinum, 3k MMR, and the server is North America. One hell of an imbalance complaint form. I'm not even quite sure what I read, but I think he complained about Roach Hydra Viper. And about Lurker and the insane scouting ability, which is practically Mepac. So I'm looking forward to this one. And here we have our subject of the day. Ken no Swa, a Protoss player from North America with 3k MMR. Has the... What is this? Like a... A black hole or like a moon or something? But what do you call it when the, the sun is behind the moon? The, it, there's a word for it in Dutch, but I don't know this in English. This happens like every couple of years. And then have people take pictures of it. But in reality, it, it kind of looks like this, actually. I think that's what it is. In the bottom right, we have Purple Goose, our Zerg player, who actually has the decal of a, a purple goose. At first, I want to say that it looks a lot like an ostrich, but no, it probably is a goose, and it's purple, and his name is Purple Goose, and the color he plays with is purple as well. So this guy is, a, is what we call a concept player, you know? He has a concept, and he really sticks with it, no matter whether it's cool or not. Also goes for a drone scout, which is somewhat surprising. Drone scouts are considered to not ever really be worth it. Kind of a, a, a bad thing to do. As a Protoss, you can just... Um, well, kind of ignore it. It doesn't matter. Zerg can get all the info that they want to be getting with their Overlord anyway. The only thing you need to do is you need to pull two workers to make sure that they can throw down a hatchery on your base. Um, and so that you can get your own Nexus in time. Oh, oh, gets blocked. Yeah, this is why you pull two workers so you can attack it. You can just get a core first as well and then attack this uh, and you should still be fine. Throws it down on the... I, I like this a lot. You know, this is really cool. Throwing down the natural on the third base if you get blocked by a drone. This is like showing up to the grocery store, but the grocery store is closed. And then as a result, you know, it's like, what's the correct decision here? You cut off your own leg and you eat that instead. It's like, I'm not quite sure if that is the best thing to do. Like, you could have also just waited for the next day. You wouldn't have died overnight. And it's the same here. You wouldn't have died building your nexus three seconds later now instead you have your nexus on the third base location which means it's going to be really vulnerable for any type of ling attacks it also means that the probes that you rally over there are going to take a very long time to get to that base and thus you'll lose some mining time it would have been way better just to build it in this location so this is genuinely quite a bad start now I'm glad you rallied your gateway. Sometimes what I see is when people don't rally their gateway and it's in this position, your adept gets stuck over here, which is really unfortunate. And I'm happy to say to see that you did not do that. Um, now the purple goose after blocking... Hello? Why would you shade away? This is your job, adept. This is like the security guard at the museum. The, the moment things get a little bit, you know, a little bit spicy. There's like three 50-year-olds that have a discount card. And you don't want to deal with it. The, the security guard just <laughs> walks away and lets the pylon get taken out. Because, of course, if you have a pylon at the museum. Um, I, I would have much preferred if that adept would have stayed at home to defend that pylon. Because that's actually just entirely the job of the adept. If links show up on your side of the map, you take them out with your adept. Now, instead, what you ended up doing is, I think, you send it into the main base and you killed one drone with it. I think the other drone that you killed was the scouting drone. But I could be wrong on that. Um, you have no real tech whatsoever either. You start getting your Stargate right now. Now, this Stargate got thrown down at 3 minutes 
and 35 seconds. The standard timing for a Stargate to go down with a Gateway Scout is 2 minutes and 21 seconds. That means that for no real reason you are um, more than 70 seconds late with your Stargate. And that is honestly kind of painful. I, I do not like that. It's bad, it just means that your opponent can delay spores forever. It means you won't be dealing any damage. It also means that you won't have any scouting information, which is kind of important in this matchup. Um, your wall in your natural is also a work of art in that it serves no real purpose. Um, the gateway over here, I am not sure why we're getting it in this exact location. You could create a bit of a wall with it over here. Um, so it, it's, it's not great so far, but... You know what? Worker count is pretty equal. Your Zerg opponent also isn't perfect. He's floating money. Yeah, you're you're doing okay-ish. You know, the the we're still in decent shape. It's not like this game is over. Sure, the early game wasn't tight. Sure, if our opponent would have link flooded, we would have absolutely lost this game a hundred percent, no doubt about it. But it didn't happen, and we can't always think about hypotheticals. Like we're living in the real world, and uh, this had no bad consequences, and thus. It wasn't too bad for you. You're not chrono boosting your next eye for some reason. I do dislike that a lot because it means you're going to fall behind even further in the worker count. Um, this oracle is going to go across the map. I was afraid you would use it to kill this overlord. I think it's the correct call to just straight away send this oracle across the map. You get double robo in your main base and then a gateway added at your third. Stopping worker production. Now, this is not a build that I'm familiar with, so I can't really comment on it. Um, I, yeah, I, I just don't know what, what the exact purpose of this is. But as always, I have a, a mind that, that wants to learn more, you know, rather than being judgy immediately. I'm like, okay, I want to see what this is going to be. Because double robo, you probably want to get a lot of immortals out, maybe... Uh, observers you, you want to get a lot of vision on the map prisms like these are the things that that i'm thinking about immediately you know it's like you want to be using that and you actually are using it this is cool because very often what happens at lower levels is that i see people throw down like four robos three stargates and then they build one void and like all right let's call it quits they warp in seven zealots attack across the map and still win the game of course but uh, I'm glad to see that's not the case here. You're actually building your production structures and you're using them. And in that case, I don't really mind it. Although this is very non-standard. This is ex an extremely rare strategy. Um, your entire build order has been kind of weird. Um, all of your moves so far have been kind of odd. But at least you're using the things that you're building. So in your little niche of build orders that don't make any sense and don't seem very good. At least you build an Observer and Immortal. Now, of course, you start idling them after I've been praising you for almost 25 seconds straight. And that is what you get for being an idiot like me and praising people for things that aren't very good. So yeah, in reality, I don't actually like the double robos. Um, but if you would have used them continuously, I at least would have understood it. Like if you're... Imagine that your goal is to build... Um, eight immortals in that case getting two robotics facilities is probably the correct way to achieve that goal the question might just be is getting eight immortals a goal that you really want to achieve in the pvz matchup at least this quickly i don't think so um but the way you're going about reaching your goal is probably correct with double robo but it seems like that wasn't your goal either and this is always something that you can uh, want to keep in mind when you're throwing down production in general it's like hey what unit composition am i working towards like um how flexible do i want to be in that unit composition because if your initial plan let's, let, let's just sketch another scenario here imagine your initial plan is, is to get those eight immortals out um, and in order to reach that goal, you throw down three robotics facilities. Then you scout a spire and you're like, wait, against spire, I want, you know, anti-air. So you throw down uh, three stargates yourself. Now, this is not a very flexible build order because um, you can't react within the production that you already have, which is why often when we see the top Protoss players play, they get a lot of gateways, they get a single robo, and they get a single stargate, and if a twilight and a forge, it leaves you with a lot of flexibility to, within the production that you already have, respond to a lot of different types of plays from the opponent. With your setup, it is kind of difficult to properly respond to something like a spire. You can't 
maybe get some phoenixes out but getting any type of gateway presence will be really difficult because you just don't have enough gateways um, so getting archons a lot of charge lots uh, one or two sentries out would just be very difficult and it's always something to keep in mind when you are building production like hey what is my goal um so yeah i i do like that you're thinking about stuff sometimes you see people just kind of blindly copying pros um you're thinking like hey what, what is my goal but yeah just just do know that there's a reason why pros do it the way that they do it this guy builds buildings like he's an ai by the way what's up with that you see that the ai usually has like a a roach worm and a bailing nest and an evo chamber on top of one another it looks kind of silly i don't know why i i know it doesn't really matter like whether he builds it over here or over here it just looks too proper and then what actually pisses me off is that this evo is one spot off because the infestation pit isn't bigger than the hydra so you just misplaced it if you're going to make a nice little square out of four buildings at least do it correctly this is actually making me upset i just realized by the way this this guy also is in a clan called p goose so he literally is the purple goose the p goose the purple goose and he's playing purple zerg that is really cool i can forgive this evo chamber mistake now all right back into the game what is it that you're actually getting so you scouted an um, infestation pit no hydra then your response was to get colossi uh, more immortals a fort base as well i kind of like that you're trying to wall here that's cool stuff you haven't once moved on the map to try and deny creep which is starting to bite you in the bum a little bit as our boy purple goose um, does not only like purple goose but also likes the purple creep and he's spreading it all across the map now you might be wondering why isn't he spending it uh, spreading it towards the far left side here it's because creep doesn't spread here on the latter map uh, the map is actually bugged fun fact well it's not a fun fact actually it's a, it's a sad fact this bug has been in the game for the past year it's not been fixed look at this no creep whatsoever beautiful stuff all right first colossi are being popped out right now and your army comp against what your opponent has is actually kind of okay getting immortals getting a colossi out against a very big roach hydra army yeah it's not how i would do it but it's probably going to do the job just fine the only thing you need to be a, a afraid of right now is either the follow-up of lurkers or the follow-up of vipers and maybe in some scenarios i could see like a corruptor roach hydra uh, very old school not really common anymore but could still be a little bit dangerous if the zerg is up in supply it's going to be five vipers rather than uh, than anything else rather than corruptors or lurkers so in that case you want to be countering those vipers already and as you have even scouted i believe that there's a hive on the way yep you should actually already be getting a templar archives at this point you have plenty of gas available um and if you would just get like oh you already have a templar archives so yeah you just warp in three four templar perfect absolutely perfect stuff it's important that you do not morph these into archons though um the use of the archon here is way less than the use of the templar so the templar will feedback your opponent if you research storm it can storm as well storm always is better than having an archon uh and having one of your colossi or mortals stay alive is also more important than having one archon deal a little bit of damage against a roach or a hydra army now this wouldn't be necessarily true if your opponent has an army that consists uh solely of uh, of, of ling bane then having archons in there actually is quite useful but against roach hydra archons don't actually do too much so you can kind of skip them getting disruptors as well right now to add a little bit of splash in your army you still haven't moved out once by the way which is somewhat impressive and the time you, you the, the timing you do decide to move out this run by gets in that is extremely unfortunate you just ignore the run by oh no he just sends it back look at this he's microing a run by at platinum level i actually can't believe what i'm seeing okay five vipers are out now this should be an issue for you but at the same time your army is so big that despite the lack of templar you might still be okay it's just going to cost you a couple of units for free so this should never have happened you lose three colossi for basically free you still have a lot of immortals which means that this fight still looks somewhat okay oh, one colossi actually stays alive as well the archons half your army just chasing Ar Ar archons the other half of your army is uh, killing drones over here i feel like you did not really micro this and as a result you kill and the drones and this base and also his army so i feel like by not microing you actually did better than you would have done if you would have microed so i like it this fight 
gets a thumbs up from me. This is an approved fight. You actually win this fight, you're up 20 workers. And this game looks pretty over. Yeah, you, you have 1600 minerals in the bank, you're on four bases. The roads run by did not deal too much damage. I thought I just saw a couple of Templar march across the map. What happened with those? I want to see those again. Yeah, I wasn't crazy. Do you have storm yet? Okay, no storm. Oh, you morphed them into Archons. Okay, no, that's completely fine. I was afraid you walked them into like 10 roaches, but instead you just morphed them into Archons. And in this case, I actually think that's a, that's a decent call. Right now, there is a, a really cool concept actually, um, which is called retreating. And this sounds kind of wild. I understand that because you have a big army and you like pressing that A button to A move across the map. But if we were to evaluate the situation right now, um, the only way that you can truly lose is to the instant remax of the Zerg. You know that the Zerg had complete map control, had a lot of eco or at least a decent amount of eco during the entire game. Um, you know that he had a, a hatchery in the main base. You know he was at least on like four or five bases, and there's still well, yeah, there's still four hatcheries remaining that can reproduce units pretty quickly. Knowing that you have a bank, you probably know that your opponent also had a bank. You just killed two bases and had a very very advantageous fight for yourself. The one way you can lose is against the remax. So what you do instead is you just walk back check what your opponent remaxes on knowing that your opponent does not have the eco to switch into a different unit comp you then counter that unit composition with your superior eco and then you push out again but in order to do that you need to retreat um i am afraid that what you're going to be doing here is you will walk into this and then well, actually you'll just kill him anyway it probably doesn't matter i still would prefer it, I think you should almost always move back. If you kill this many bases and you did not lose any eco yourself, there's no reason to attack into someone for the, su for the supply tower. Okay, well, here, if you're going to attack, at least use everything. There's like two disruptors sitting in this prism, a couple of zealots as well. These archons were idling. This colossi is attacking the hatchery. Interesting fight this was. Very, very interesting fight. You end up losing the disruptor as well. <laughs> very nice. The best part is that you're still really far ahead. And that the Zerg probably realizes that as well. Like the Zerg knows that he's completely dead. Like he's, he's like, wait, this guy's a complete idiot. Like looks at his drone counts. Like I have like 40 drones. I know my opponent is on four bases. He's like, all he has left is like... 10 hydras, 13 hydras and a roach. Vipers don't actually deal damage. That's the entire damage output here. You start tacking into storm, get two colossi out, still have five immortals. Like you're winning really, really hard. The reason why you don't think you are winning is probably because there's so much creep on the map. It feels scary, but this game is actually completely freaking over right now. Like super over. The only thing you need to do is clear a little bit of creep, take a fifth base, Take the watchtowers. Let's not forget that you haven't had map vision at any point during the game. I love where this observer is positioned, by the way. You have a unit that is invisible, can spot anything, anywhere, anytime. And you decide to put it in the dead space where you can see whether he's researching adrenal glands or not. Although I do doubt whether you know that, for the people who don't know, of course, is that if the pool is researching something, it starts moving a little bit like this. Like the wavy grass in Spongebob when he goes jellyfishing. So you just got to pay attention to that. And that's what this observer is for. Oh, actually gets F2 back home or gets just uh, sent back home. One of the two. Wouldn't surprise me if that was an F2. Try taking a fifth base as well here. But uh, the creep obviously managed to block that. There's a lot of zealots. There is storm. What is the upgrades? 2-1 upgrades against 3-3. Now the upgrades are a little bit lacking in this case. Um, it's just also surprising because there's double forges. Having 2-1 upgrades with double forges, that is actually very, very little. Uh, it probably just completely forgot about it. We're not going to focus too much on that. Like, it's bad, but Storm doesn't really care about upgrades. Immortals, well, they do care a little about upgrades, but it's also not the end of the world. You get caught out of position a little bit. This Roach Hydra attack just moves in. Uh, you do manage to take it out. This is really 
bad though. So if you're trying to, well, once again, we kind of have to think of like what goal you're trying to achieve right now in this game. But it feels to me that you just want to sit back and defend. And in that case, in order to have a successful defense, you still need to try and get some map vision. So like a zealot over here, a zealot over here. Uh, maybe you have like an observer positioned over here and put your army in between the two bases. Or you could just build a lot of cannons on one of the two bases, put like two Templar there and ta-da, you also have a defense. This is the weirdest run I've seen in my life. Five slow stalkers without blink and a zealot scouting this top right side base and then going in here watch him kill 12 workers if he actually gets 12 workers I, I will give this the imbalance stamp if these five stalkers get 12 workers it means that the zerg is not paying attention okay well phew, i did not want to give the imbalance stamp yet but so far he's making a pretty decent case for zerg being imbalanced i mean this guy is stuck on a roach hydra viper army um, with three three upgrades against such a sophisticated Protoss army, I still don't actually see a way for this Protoss player to lose whatsoever. Completely uh, completely blind on the bottom side and start sending Zealots out. This is actually a very good play. Zealot run buys are a great tool at A, keeping your opponent home, and B, getting information. So those are the two things that you want right now. I also kind of believe you should be considering... Um, attacking at some point i mean he's practically maxed out um your opponent isn't going to stay on roach hydra viper forever although he's on 36 workers and that means that transitions will be difficult this is also kind of weird no look at this so you know right now um at this point that the entire army or practically the entire army is on the bottom side what i would do in this case is i would start moving my entire main army towards the bottom send like a zealot over here maybe send three zealots over here now sadly there is roaches there but of course you don't know that and then you at least get that information that the roaches are there if the roaches aren't there you can kill a lot of drones that way you're a matching your opponent's army movement you get some map vision and you do some harassment damage which all three of these things are really really good as a protoss player so that's what you want to be doing instead is you spotted this army oh you actually do start moving are you just too late yeah you're just too late yeah, maybe you should have recalled oh you stopped moving yeah, maybe you should have recalled actually send another zealot towards the watchtower after your army dies over here to see if he's going to attack you would have been helpful losing this base isn't the end of the world and it might actually he might actually be doing you a favor because right now in your protos caveman brain we all have it you go like lost the base time to counter attack and you start the counter attack and of course that's exactly what's going to happen here it's beautiful this is why sometimes i believe that zergs should not kill bases if they cannot fight the counter attack and right now purple goose absolutely cannot fight the counter attack he has a single brute lord no he's oh wait he can't fight the counter attack he's nine brute lords that's a big rb right here you have nothing really prepared for this either which is somewhat painful um yeah they, they, this is an issue as well i haven't really focused on it too much but often when you do not scout and do not attack and do not transition into a different army what can end up happening is that your opponent does transition into a different army and you will be unaware of that and in that case what happens is you you can end up with like a completely non-anti-air army uh, except for the storms and a couple of archons against these brute lords and no matter how massive your army is no matter how valuable your army is you're just going to get absolutely blasted um, or at least the brute lords are going to eventually stay alive and kind of destroy this army and it's really frustrating because you had a good army for a long time which you could have used to attack or trade out or to get map control another thing by the way that you could have done in this case as you actually tap out i'm not even sure if that was necessary i mean you were still up 30 workers Another thing you could have done, which once again, this is kind of a revolutionary concept, but the moment you see that your army isn't the correct army to deal with your opponent's army, um, you could throw down like a storm over here, a storm over here, and actually just run back home. Like, what's he gonna do? Chase you? Like, there's no shot. It's like, like unless, yeah, it's just not possible. Unless he has like fungals, he does have a couple of abducts, so he might get like three or four units. But him getting three or four units is better than you losing, lo you losing your entire army. So at this point, you can just move back, 
run home and there will be absolutely no issue actually what are these two colossi gonna do i haven't paid enough attention to this colossi i remember the first colossi actually damaged this hatchery it still has the scars now this hatchery is also going to get it might actually end up falling as well look at that entire fight i guess you literally just a move every single fight which honestly majority of the time is okay but if you're fighting an army that you can't fight it's best to just move Kuben back home then you should be fine yeah this is a, a very very sad game it's actually a very very sad game um, you're winning the entire time despite you doing very little correct if i was the zerg player i would have sent this one in it's like how uh, how is it possible that i almost lost to this guy i had an entire map covered in creep spread um he built a pure colossus immortal army i don't think he even feedbacked any of my vipers during the entire game like i played so much better and yet he almost managed to beat me like, how did that happen um that, and i would have i would have been kind of sympathetic towards that imbalance complaint form but this one is like you say insane scouting ability map hacks 100 army supply in a second like none of these things even really mattered like the insane scouting ability and the map hacks is completely irrelevant because you always stayed at your third and fourth base you never moved out you could have denied the creep and taken the watchtowers but you didn't do that him having vision of the entire map doesn't matter if you're not moving on the map the hundred army supply in a second i guess one time he remaxed on roaches and hydras but there was more like 50 army supply in 25 seconds and you could have just gone back home and still been fine I, you can't play a macro game with zerg or you will lose badly i like it, this entire game just doesn't make sense to me you do nothing you have the correct army for a very long time then you attack into your opponent by the time your army isn't the correct army anymore and your opponent has brute lords you're consistently ahead in eco you have no map vision whatsoever like you you actually did nothing correct yet you still play a very long macro game and you almost win and there's like practically 15 different points in the game where i could look at if you would do one thing different here you would win like legit 15 things like from retreating to having a better unit composition from microing your army um you know defending your bases in time having map vision just nothing absolutely nothing was correct so i don't think with a good conscience my friend i can tell you that zerk is imbalanced no my friend it is you who sucks and you suck very very hard all right that's going to be it for me today thanks all so much for watching to this episode of is it imba or do i suck if you did enjoy this episode don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and hopefully i'll see all of you next time for a new video thank you and bye bye